Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode 113. Uh, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time, almost every Friday. Um, uh, I'm Anton. Today we have with us a very special guest, Hayden. Thank you for joining. Uh, it's an honor to be here, Anton. And uh, I'm excited that today we have a, a, a tip that could be described as being part of a series. Uh, yes, I think so. It's part of a series. And it, this tip's a little different in that it's, you know, the tip itself, I think, is interesting. But I think it's, it's, it's that the tip is a window behind the scenes of what's going on when you do things in Apex. And I think that those are, are interesting tips, even if they're not fully relevant to somebody's day-to-day -day job. Just understanding how Apex works is always beneficial. Um, I, I'm always um, a fan and uh, uh, peeking behind the curtain. So the, um, uh, what I bring today is a discussion on how to deploy data. So we've discussed this, we've touched on this in, in at least two episodes so far. In episode uh, 48, uh, we talked about- That was the about, data packager, yeah. That's right. And uh, more recently in episode 92, we talked Let's about- Let's see, that would have been REST services. <laughs> <laughs> I am so good. I know the, we've done 113 episodes. Say a number, I'll tell you what it was. <laughs> no, please don't. It's almost believable, Anton. <laughs> um, um, okay, so deploying data is is yes. a topic that I think a lot of us do run into, and, and those two those two actually are my two favorite ways of doing it: the data patcher and the RESTful services. How can we possibly yes. have more to say on this topic? Precisely. So uh, I um, personally am a, am a huge fan of Russell Services, and I would do it if I always had the option. Um, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'll get ready to share my screen. Uh, but um, I currently am trying to uh, solve deploying data in an environment where I don't um, have the ability to deploy via Russell Services, as I think would be the case for many people. Um, sure. And so I'm Which favoring is... Data Package Manager. Great. Yeah, but I've that's a, a supporting a object for folks that don't remember. It'll go back to episode 48. But in the supporting objects, you can create data package. Yeah. That's right. But um, I've hit a bit of a snag deploying data uh -huh. using Data Package Manager. Uh, can you uh, guess what it is, Anton? Can I guess what it is? Oh, there are so many little snags. I, I, I see Mishka has a, a guess. Mishka, what do you have? What's your, what's your guess? Um, maybe we'll get a comment on it. Uh, I wasn't supposed to come on. Uh, clubs. Clubs, oh, clubs are one that I've run into very recently because I'm not getting the full club, and I, I actually am surprised by that. Um, is that it, Hayden? Uh, no, clubs are not an issue in in this particular instance. But good guess, okay. uh, mm -hmm. and the answer is revealed if you um, share my screen. Oh, well, at least it's data, implied. Yeah, well, so, data packager only does inserts. And in fact, if you try to insert something that's already got a unique key, you're going to get an error. It's going to say, inspect the error table, that kind of thing. And you're, it's not going to do it. it yeah. That's right. So, so I might as well kick off my timer here. We okay, delayed so this long enough. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you try to deploy um, a data, data package manager script uh, where there's, uh, and you're violating local primary keys, unique constraints, et cetera, uh, you're going to get, uh, it's, it's going to fail. It's not going to deploy the data the way you want it to, right? because it does yeah, not, it, as you say, merge. It seems like an oversight. The data packing manager could have easily said, hey, do you want to do a merge and allowed you to pick the the, the primary key column or something like that? Ah, it seems like a real oversight, maybe an opportunity for an idea in the Apex Ideas app. Uh, yes, um, uh, something I should do. So, but today I, I have uh, two um, thoughts on how to overcome this little hitch. The first one is a manual approach. Um, so as everyone knows from watching and uh, paying close attention to episode 48, uh, when you um, create a, a data file, when you prepare to deploy data using data package manager, it creates a zip file of the, the data that you're, you're seeking to um, deploy in a zip file. So, so this zip file contains the uh, JSON of the data that I want to deploy. Right. So each table gets a zip file, and that zip file has two files within it, the, the profile and the actual data. Yeah. So here we can see that this AIT customers.json contains all the data that I want. So uh, 
in order to uh, uh, merge this into my table, it's actually extremely simple, it, it provided you have um, access to the environment where you're looking to deploy. You come to data load definitions, you click create. Um, I'm going to call this data load definition EIT113. I'm going to select my customer's table, what I'm looking to deploy into. And, and here is where the existing JSON file comes in handy. I just select it in to help the uh, data load. Oh, wait, is that, did you want the JSON? The is, is that the data or is that the data load definition? Oh, okay. This is the okay, data. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to select the primary key. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to create and add a page. And I'm going to call this load, I'll call it merge data. Oh, and by default, data load definitions do emerge. Ah. And now I can actually load the data. Uh, and it's going to merge successfully. So it, it successfully merged the 100 rows um, that, that, were, that are in the customer's table. Oh, very cool. So this is um, a, a great solution, um, but it has a limitation. Well, it doesn't happen during your deployment, right? You have to do it after your deployment. You have to come in here. Yeah. So you've done your deployment, then you have to come in here and load the data. Exactly. But uh, behind the scenes, if you inspect how this is done, uh, you can use the same tools to do it via script. So... Oh. Um, I have uh, my own homegrown version of this load from static file where I can, uh, if you pass in the name of the static file and the table that you're looking to deploy, uh, you can. Oh, how'd you get that data out? So you're just reading it from that zip file. That's right. So uh, the, the, how, the way I'm representing the contents of this file here, um, I, I simply borrow from the script that Apex wrote for me when it created this data load page. So I can see that it's using Apex data parser dot parse and you pass in the uh, static ID. So uh, using the exact same, uh, so uh, copy and pasting that query, I can, so I'm using the same Apex data parser dot parse uh, with the same static ID, but what I pass into it for the uh, JSON club is Apex um, at the club that I extract from Apex zip .get file content. So I use another Apex API to pass in the necessary uh, JSON. So oh. I'm able to read the contents of the uh, zip file, and then, um, and, but that part wouldn't be necessary for loading the the data by script. All that would be necessary for that would be to use the um, Apex data loading dot load data. API, where uh, uh, you need to give it the clob contents of the JSON in the zip file and the static ID of the data load definition. So essentially, with minor changes, the code that we're looking at right here, 23 lines of code, you could put this in your supporting objects definition file, and it would do it during during your, your application deployment. That's right, yeah. So uh, obviously, there's, there's some things that, that would be idiosyncratic to your a deployment strategy that you'd want to think through, but uh, I, I think this is a this is a strong building block to uh, uh, deploying data with some combination of Apex data, data packager and um, merging. Sure, and in fact, you wouldn't even have to do it. Uh, I said during using supporting objects, but this script could be if you have deployment scripts, it could be in your deployment script. It wouldn't have to be a supporting object; it could just be there. You simply uh, precisely right, and, and I will also packager. add. I will also add that um, data package manager doesn't strictly need to be part of this equation either. So if um, uh, so long as you have a, a, a JSON version of the data you're looking to deploy in your static files or somehow available in your um, destination environment, uh, you can still use a data load definition and Apex data loading to load data to extract that JSON and uh, merge it. All right. Well, that is our five minutes for sure. Um, so uh, hey, uh, Rich has a comment that uh, let's link, link those CTE names. I think that's an interesting one because um, 
you know, with any modern version of the Oracle database, we can have much longer names of our, um, of all of our elements, our table names and everything. But I think a lot of us are still stuck in the 30 character uh, limit. Um, yes. Uh, hard habit to break. Point well taken. So um, I do have a related tip, um, but if you just came in for five minutes, it, it's, we're way past that. So do all the things you're supposed to do. Tell your friends about the show. Um, like invite your mom to join you the next time. She's going to love it. Um, all that stuff. So I have this little related tip and it's, um, it's just a peek also into the way things are done um, under the covers with, with Apex. Um, and that's, you mentioned you can, in your static files, you can put a file and you can move it along uh, through your code promotion. So now it's in your static files. But there's one thing about static files that you have to be careful about. And this, I think this is an important point. Static files are available without somebody logging in. They don't need us in a, in a session at all. If they know the name of the file, you can construct the URL and you can get that file. Um, and so you want to be careful about what you put in static files. You don't want to put anything in your static files that you don't want to be just publicly available. Right. Except, except that directory, Apex dollar data dollar package, PKG. Apex dollar data dollar PKG. Not available publicly. That directory within there, you have to be logged into the builder to get those files. So, and the string is Apex dollar? Data dollar PKG. If in your Apex static dollar, files, if you, put, if you put a file into that directory within your static files, you, you, you can access it through PL SQL, but not through the rest URL unless you're logged into the builder. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little, a that's, little kind of thing. So, if yeah, you, yeah. yeah, if you want to put something in your static files that's sensitive, right? You don't want it to be potentially out there. Stick it in that directory, and you have to be logged into the builder to get to get gain access to it through through the REST URL endpoint. I mean, that's pretty powerful. I like that. Yeah, um, just a little, a little peek under the covers, as it were. Um, well, like I said at the beginning of this, I think the, the tip is really about that, about kind of pulling back the covers, seeing how Apex builds things, uh, maybe um, encouraging people when they do generate a page with or with Apex, when the wizards you know create a page for you or something, go back and look at what's going on in that page. Um, I had no idea, honestly, Hayden, this is like, this was all, this was news to me, everything that you showed, so. Well, I, I hope people are impressed with how little work I did because um, essentially Apex did all of it for me. Yeah, just go look, go take a look. All right, well, people have wasted a perfectly good 13 minutes uh, with us this afternoon. I'm ready for lunch. How about you? Likewise. Uh, always good chatting with you, Anton, and uh, have a great weekend. You too. Bye-bye, everybody.